Dr. Jack Bright's life has been largely defined by one really bad day. Namely, back when he was a mere junior researcher from an illustrious, complicated, and foundation-connected family. He was given the task of carrying the SCP-963 medallion all the way from the test chamber back to its containment area. Simple enough, seeing as, other than being indestructible, the medallion had no obvious anomalous effects. That was until Abel breached containment nearby and hacked the young Jack Bright to death with his anomalous blades. But in what you could either describe as a miracle or a terrible, terrible curse, Dr. Bright wasn't dead. His soul was trapped in the medallion, taking over any body it touched. This has given Dr. Bright a form of body-swapping immortality, which has made him both a valuable asset to the goals of the SCP Foundation and also an extremely unhappy man. But what would you do if you were a mortal like Jack Bright? We pose this very question in our community post section, and now we're going to see what the fans of SCP Explained would do with the poison gift of true immortality. The Unknown Avenger said, I would become a vigilante who doesn't have to worry about facing justice through the death sentence. If I get executed, I'll simply reincarnate as someone new and continue my vigilante justice work. Well, that's somewhat terrifying. Thank you for sharing, Unknown Avenger. All we ask is that you politely keep your dangerous vigilante activities away from us, just so we don't get caught in the crossfire. We're really not sure the universe can take two Deadpools. Vance Alexander said, Bearing in mind the duplicating ability of the medallion, I'd make two of myself and then fight myself. Or I wouldn't limit it to two. I'd make a whole bunch of copies and have a battle royale of myself. May the best copy win. This gives us an important opportunity to remind you of one of Dr. Bright's lesser-known abilities. Contact with the necklace means immediate brain death. And if the necklace is removed from the wearer, the body will simply collapse and die. However, if the necklace is left on the body for 30 days, a copy of Dr. Bright's consciousness will remain even when the necklace is removed. Theoretically, this could be used to create a clone army, and using that army for self-against-self gladiator battles would undeniably be pretty kick-ass. Deadly Veggie said, If I was immortal, I would try to play and complete the stories of every D&D character I've made. Now that would be something only an immortal could do. A truly avant-garde approach, using one infinite life to live the countless finite lives of others, knowing that not even a nat 20 will save you from your own purgatorial existence. Phantom said, That's actually a really tough one. I'm unironically scared to death of dying, so I guess I just try to do things I want to do. Probably would end up trying to become a well-known gamer or something, lol. Or maybe teach forever. It's depressing since it's such a curse to be immortal. While we do think being a teacher or a well-known gamer are both noble pursuits for the immortal about town, we're honestly more curious as to what being ironically scared of dying would be. Is that what the kids are into nowadays? Let us know down in the comments. Mr. Knight the Detective said, I would have time to watch pretty much every cartoon, anime, movie, and series I ever missed. After I'm done with all of them, I will fulfill my bucket list with other wishes. This is certainly a novel way to use total immortality, but a word to the wise, make sure you get through your watch list before the rest of humanity is wiped out by whatever XK class end of the world scenario Lady Luck has lined up for us. Our money is either on climate change or the duplicating cakes, because if you're the only one left and you happen to break your glasses, you'll forever be wandering around the empty wastes, tearfully murmuring, It isn't fair. There was time now. There was time. What is a melon said? Personally, I would try and make a time machine to watch many historical events unfold. I mean, you have plenty of time and you can't die from any certain event. Could be fun. A lofty goal indeed. Here's a fun exercise for you to immediately find out if you're ever going to create or at least obtain time travel technology in your lifetime. Make a promise to yourself that if you do, you'll come back to this exact moment. Okay? Good. However, if a version of you from the future hasn't just appeared in front of you, then I'm afraid I have some very disappointing news for you on the whole time travel thing. Cade Peterson said, I'm kind of confused with how the amulet works. If Dr. Bright died and then somebody put the amulet on an animal, would he become the animal and still be able to talk, or would the animal just turn into him? Next question, with that in mind, couldn't he just get it to be put on an anomalous object such as 682 and use it for good? All very valid questions that is worth answering before we move on. 
First, if Dr. Bright's 963 amulet was placed on the body of an animal, it would merely plant his consciousness into the animal not in any way physically transform the beast. Whether the animal could talk purely depends on whether it has the necessary anatomy to imitate human-esque speech patterns. And as to your second question, this has been attempted with SCP-682 specifically, in fact. See our previous video on how that epic battle played out. But to give you an abridged version, some anomalous entities are more resistant to SCP-963's abilities than us mere humans are. Not all potential hosts are created equal. Foxy Gamer said, I drink one drop of water from every country and one drop of lava from every volcano, then probably watch as every generation of humanity expand and rule it. This is the exact kind of bizarre, inexplicable madness we were hoping to see when we first posed this question. The specificity of these suggestions implies a fascinating level of planning and foresight. And it's undeniable that if you were able to prove to people you had imbibed a drop of lava from every single volcano on Earth, there's about 1,350 active ones, by the way, you probably would have some claim to being humanity's supreme ruler, or just someone who's very spicy. Mangalad said, If I had the power like Bright, I would create the ultimate wine, make it rest on a barrel as long as possible. Ah, yes, I see we have a person of culture among us. Can't wait for all the comments to be about me saying among us. God. Nonetheless, having Dr. Bright's immortality would be an excellent excuse to cultivate some of the finest aged wine the world has ever known. Perhaps those sweet overtones and nutty undertones will dull the existential horror of never knowing the eternal rest of death. And I swear to God, the comments are just going to say Amogus. Quote C said, Oh boy, immortality. Now I can dedicate more time to my favorite hobby, procrastinating on animation projects. That's the can-do attitude we love here at SCP Explained. Eternity certainly lasts a while. Imagine all the incredible animations you could not get done in that time. Ha <laughs> ha! Inspirational. The Outsider said, Dedicating yourself to something meaningful like Jack Bright is the only way to do it. That is, of course, after you had some fun for the first few decades. We couldn't agree more, Outsider. After all, you only live once still applies, even if that once lasts forever. Dr. Bright tried to have some fun on his own before he leveled out, and now there's a very long list of things he's not allowed to do. Perhaps we should cover that someday. Michael Awesome said, If I were a mortal, I would steer humanity into the direction of logic and science, guiding them from the shadows into an eternal golden age using the resources I've accumulated through forever. That certainly sounds awesome, Michael. However, feel free to call us pessimists, but humanity has never been that easy to steer out of the shadows. See, the long list of very smart, paradigm-shifting individuals executed as witches or heretics for such bold and radical claims as the Earth rotates around the Sun and math exists, but we'll be happy to be proven wrong on this front, of course. Silent Monkey said, Dedicate my life into turning into a hot dog sandwich. Hey, if you can find a very unscrupulous man with a meat mincing machine, you may take a lot less time than eternity to see this peculiar dream become a glorious reality. No X69, nice, said, I would make an army of myself, and when I wouldn't want to go to the store, then I would just send my clone for some Doritos. There are a lot of truly nefarious and megalomaniacal things you can do with an army of like-minded clones, like the Battle Royale guy from earlier. So it's relieving that you just use yours for performing menial tasks. But bear in mind, just because these clones are like-minded doesn't mean they'll be subservient to you. If you're the controlling type, you might even have a violent clone uprising on your hands. And trust us, nobody likes an attack of the clones. Food for thought. The Voices Gaming said, Depending on how the medallion works, I try to keep me and the woman I love alive. If I can't do that, then I'd give up the medallion to the SCP Foundation, assuming it exists, a life without someone isn't a life worth living, no matter how much you've accomplished. It'll always get boring eventually. A very poignant point. We have good news and bad news. Technically speaking, with the help of your 963 medallion, your loved one's body can survive. However, their brain will technically be occupied by a copy of your own consciousness. But if that copy is willing to play pretend, well, maybe you can make some kind of mutually beneficial arrangement? The finer details of that will be something for you and yourself to sort out. Good luck. 
Fox Films said, I would freak someone out by repeatedly, over the course of a few years, going up to them in different bodies and saying the same phrase each time. Using your abilities to gaslight one individual over the course of several years definitely seems like something Dr. Bright might do if he was in a bad mood, so we're sure he would appreciate this act of extreme anomalous pettiness. Just promise you won't do it to us. This really isn't something we want on our plate right now. Zero Confidence said, Well, a good portion of my lives would be developing a meaningful relationship with 682 via the process of annoying them with my presence every few weeks. Or when I'm tired of my current body and ready to move on to that nice D-class who was next in line. This is definitely an original one. We appreciate that you're still rosy-eyed about the possibility of a single atom of goodness residing somewhere deep beneath SCP-682's nasty scaly hide. Whether you'll actually find it, even with an eternity of searching, is another question. But if goodwill hunting has taught us anything, if you repeat, it's not your fault enough, even if it kills you a thousand times in between, it might eventually have a cathartic emotional outpouring. Hey, it's worth a try, right? Cracker County said, I'd enact minuscule amounts of tomfoolery at the expense of others. Hey, you know what you like, and you're doing what you can to obtain it. We can't help but respect that about you. Sometimes setting modest yet attainable goals is the most efficient way to go, even when you have an eternity at your fingertips. Nicholas Lau said, Personally, I go to space with a lot of pain medication and magnetic boots, then do laps around the asteroid belt. If I'm immortal, even with all that pain, I could do a proper jog that isn't just strolling around the block. Also figure out a cure for cancer and whipping SCP-038 with really long spaghetti for infinite food. Wow, this is a hell of a bucket list, even for someone who knows they're never actually going to kick that bucket. We don't want to mess with your dreams here, but it is important to remember that there is considerable distance between asteroids in an asteroid belt, even in a low-gravity environment, so you may need to seriously work on your jumping skills. The cure for cancer is an undeniably notable goal, and we're personally very invested in you using SCP-038 a tree that clones anything that touches it to create infinite spaghetti. We find that idea to be molto bene. Mindscarfed Bro said, If I was immortal, I would probably go to the cell of Shy Guy and look at him. That is certainly an interesting way to spend your time. But there are two worrying potential issues that could come up here. Famously, SCP-096 leaves no trace of its victims, so it'd be fascinating to see if the SCP-963 medallion would be left after the onslaught. However, we find our second concern to be an even more frightening possibility. What if the rage state of SCP-096 carried over between bodies? What if every time you regenerated, SCP-096 was activated anew and made a beeline for you? You would be in the worst kind of hell, caught in an infinite loop of being murdered by SCP-096 again and again until the world collapses between the two of you. So, yes, we personally think that this little stunt just may not be worth the risk. Dufordial said, I would probably spend my time learning all languages, science, and basically everything, I guess, and then try to ascend high in the ranks of the Foundation and someday become a member of the O5 Council. Unlikely, though, since the O5 could be immortal as well, and maybe accumulate more power by throwing my medallion at anomalies. Funnily enough, this is pretty much exactly how Jack Bright himself uses the medallion, so you'd probably be in good company with the SCP Foundation's grumpiest immortal. Pandy Goodies said, I'd probably do whatever I can to ensure every meme and joke thrown at the internet revivable. I'll bring back Catburger's memes in the year 3022. Of all the suggestions we've observed today, this is undeniably the evilest of them all, Pandy Goodies. And we swear that if you use this power to give immortality to the Among Us memes that plague our common sections, you will have a powerful enemy in SCP Explained today. You have our word on that. Seriously. Samantha Agius said, To be honest, I feel sorry for Dr. Jack Bright and his family. Everyone deserves a fresh start, right? We're with you on this one, Samantha. The ballad of Jack Bright himself and the terrible tragedies and upsets that pervade his family easily tugs at the heartstrings. If today has taught us anything, it's that there truly is no longevity without tragedy. Horseman Gaming said, If I was immortal, I'd spend my time finding ways to become as smart as Rick Sanchez, invent the interdimensional portal gun, and start dimension hopping. Or, more accurately, pitching my medallion into the portal, seeing where it goes. 
After all, it is indestructible. Using the SCP-963 medallion to become Rick Sanchez is certainly a new one. Perhaps then you can place the medallion onto a pickle, and then it'd be the funniest. Wait, what do you mean that's a dead meme? Well, it doesn't matter, because if panty goodies gets their way, no meme will ever really die, no matter how obnoxious. And I know, I'm a meme boy. Prosimity said, I would plant as many trees in the world as I can and watch them grow. Well, that's just incredibly wholesome, and we think that this would be a truly wonderful way to use the power of immortality. A shiny SCP Foundation Gold Star for you, Prosimity. UAF Gemin said, I'd probably actually start working on my mental health. Hey, for what it's worth, don't wait for the gift of immortality to be bestowed on you before you start working on your mental health. Working on yourself is always a good thing, and if you've been looking for an excuse, there's no better time to start than right now. Leora Saluk said, After sulking over how everyone I know and will know is either dead or will die during my never-ending lifespan, I would learn everything I could about any topic simply because I had the time to whether it would be about the weather or about anomalies and the Foundation. I would set to working my way into the Foundation and getting a good, acceptable job that gave me enough clearance to be able to access the most information possible. I would then work in two ways, one by helping with the actual goals of the Foundation and all that comes with that, and also by working my passion, writing stories, and implementing many things I would see working at such a place as the SCP Foundation different enough that it wasn't an exact copy, but similar enough so that if someone were to read it after having heard rumors about such a beast, they would assume it came from the book and it was in fact fiction and not reality. An extra defense against people finding out the truth. Dr. Bright, is that you? What did we tell you about making sock puppet accounts and commenting on our community posts? The O5 Council is going to give you a very stern talking to about this. Jahani Plays said, I'd play every video game out there, and I'd watch every SCP Explained story and animation video. We think this is a truly excellent idea, and something we should all do right now, even if we're not immortal. Heck, perhaps you should start with SCP Immortal Dr. Bright Explained, and Dr. Bright for President SCP-4444 Bush vs. Gore, a great pair of videos if you're interested in more exploits from the truly legendary Dr. Jack Bright. What? We're just saying.